Is he actually underrated, Ant? I think so. I think he's better than, than everybody has given him credit for. Lindor's actually underrated and underappreciated in this town. I know the contract, but still, I think Lindor's the best shortstop in baseball. People need to start appreciating Francisco Lindor. Danny, where would you rank Lindor among shortstops in baseball? He's number two for me. I made a top ten list the other day. He's number two. I agree with you. He's underrated. He's underappreciated. Too late. I'm in the 40s. Gotta go around the horn. Faster. Not you. Track, but I cannot use the word underrated. I agree with you. He's underrated. He's underappreciated. He's underrated. He's underappreciated. Make up your damn mind. Should have been an all-star the last two years. He will be this year. Francisco Lindor of the Mets, definitely the second best shortstop in baseball right now. It can't be this stupid. This guy is elite at the position. He's disgusting. He's exactly what we've paid for. And he is one of the best shortstops in all of Major League Baseball. It's not even close. Not debatable. That's not proof. It's still debatable, but it's a good piece of evidence. And that's why I'm here, to debunk this evidence that Francisco Lindor is some sort of underrated player or the best shortstop in baseball, or at least a top shortstop in baseball. So welcome to both people subscribed and even the ones who haven't yet, I still love you. Can we acknowledge that the argument of being an underrated shortstop or one of the best shortstops don't really go together? You kind of have to pick one between the narrative of he's underrated or he's one of the best because if he's one of the best, he's not underrated. He's one of the best. Pick one and ride with it. You can't really go with both. And I do want to make it clear that I'm not a Francisco Lindor hater by any means. Will it seem like I am? Sure, but I actually like the guy and the player that he is. He's good and he's fun. This is more so how overvalued he seems to be as a shortstop and just an overall player with all the context added. He's not underrated. He's become pretty overrated when in reality he should be recognized as the same player he's always been. Nothing really has changed. Lindor first came up in 2015 on a very mediocre Cleveland team, but his calling up was the beginning of a new era for the Indians. He was the 8th overall pick in 2011, the Indians' top prospect and one of the top prospects in all baseball and even though the team was just meh what Lindor did playing real well and finishing second in rookie of the year voting was a sign of the future the immediate future because then came 2016 and Lindor helped lead the Indians to not just a division title in the postseason but all the way to the World Series they were just one win away from winning it all he didn't have much power in 2016 but everything else was good the batting average he didn't strike out much he played great defense he was a really really solid above average hitting shortstop who then got better in 2017 because that's when Lindor found more power. Adding more of that to his game, he actually doubled his power, more than doubled his power, going from just 15 homers in 2016 to 33 in 2017. The average went down a bit, Lindor's never been a 300 hitter again, but he continued to hit to be a really, really solid above average hitting shortstop. Also playing every day, 158 games in 2016, 159 in 2017, 158 in 2018, a year where Lindor had the most played appearances and at-bats in the American League, hit almost 40 homers, became an all-star for the third year in a row, then four years in a row in 2019. So go to the end of the 2019 season leading into what would end up being the shortened pandemic plague 2020 season. And Francisco Lindor is a really solid hitter and shortstop. That's what he is. Two silver sluggers, two gold gloves, three top 10 MVP vote finishes. He plays almost every day, doesn't deal with injuries, very reliable. I mean, what can you not love about a player like this? And I still would say that to this day. There's nothing or at least not much to hate about Francisco Lindor, to hate about having a guy like that on your team. 2020 was kind of like the prologue to Lindor starting to be looked at as a player in decline or someone you could call overrated by some. He played all 60 games. His numbers were kind of down in the process, but it was also just those 60 games. Nothing in 2020 can or should be taken for face value. At least nowhere near in comparison to any other normal season in history. And that's just a real thing. So, okay, whatever. He has a more mediocre 2020, but Lindor is still looked at as one of the best, maybe the best shortstop in the game. And with the big change in New York Mets ownership and the way that new ownership led by who's now the richest man in baseball, Steve Cohen, was going to lead things, it just so happened to coincide with Lindor being just a year from free agency. Now, am I going to say Steve Cohen wanting to go crazy and spend his money in hopes of the Mets winning is a bad thing? Of course not. That idea is great. It always was and always will be. An owner caring and committing a lot is always an awesome thing for a team and its fan base to have. It's the reality of how that idea was executed by Steve Cohen. Cohen's obviously spent a ton of money since taking over the Mets, like historic amounts of money, an absurd amount of spending that's led to exactly one singular playoff win. More on that in another video, but Francisco Lindor was the first massive thing Cohen did, immediately trading for him, and then a little bit after that, signing him to the biggest and richest contract in New York Mets history. 10 years, 
there's $341 million and this will continue to be important to the whole point of this video. Me not mentioning the contract in this video would be like watching The Dark Knight without Heath Ledger's Joker. It just doesn't make any sense. It's too important. So he signs this contract, he's happy, the Mets are happy, the fans are happy, everybody's happy until he struggled to start the year. Bad. And it was kind of scary because when you look at what had been leading up to this, Lindor had actually subtly been showing a slight decline as time was going. He wasn't necessarily even striking out a ton, he just wasn't hitting the ball very hard, with things getting so bad to the point where he was booed by the fans. Obviously not ideal for what's supposed to now be your franchise superstar, unfortunately he did finish the year strong, continuing that into a much better 2022 season for everyone involved. Lindor was a lot better, putting up really solid numbers offensively, being a good defender as always as the Mets were also great, winning 100 games and making the postseason for the first time since 2016 only to go one and done and lose to the 89 win Padres. Then comes 2023 and Lindor has a really solid year again. The Mets are bad this time, but Lindor pretty much mirrored his 2022, solid hitting, good defense, and that's pretty much all you can ask for from any player. The issue is... Lindor isn't just any player, and you can't really treat him that way. He's making $34 million a year, something that will continue until 2032, by far the highest paid guy on the team, one of the highest paid in the sport, and again, pretty clearly supposed to be the franchise guy. Is he a bad player? Absolutely not. He's a good player, but I think the thing with Lindor is when he got traded to the Mets and signed that massive deal with them, there seemed to be an expectation that he was going to take that next step or something offensively, and he'd finish top three in the MVP voting for the first time and maybe even win the award. He was 27 in the first year of it, supposed to be in his so-called prime now. So I think the general thought, especially when you get $341 million, is that you're going to take that next step as a hitter and overall player. But that's never happened. Lindor's numbers as a Met have overall been very consistent with what they were as an Indian. Nothing has changed that much. And I just feel like with the size of the contract that Lindor got, that's a disappointment. If he was making half of what he's making now or a little less than half, we obviously wouldn't be having this conversation. Big, massive contracts seem to get thrown around like Oprah giving out cars nowadays, and that's true. But there's also one big similarity between every one of those contracts given out. And I'm more so specifically talking about any contract that's at least $300 million. I'll just stick with that number, but for every player that's gotten a $300 million contract or more, Shohei Otani, future Hall of Famer, Mike Trout, future Hall of Famer, Mookie Betts, future Hall of Famer, Aaron Judge, future Hall of Famer, those are all pretty certain as far as what we see right now. Then you go down in the list more and there's some names up in the air regarding if they'll actually be Hall of Fame players like Manny Machado, Corey Seager, Rafael Devers, some more sure ones like Bryce Harper, Garrett Cole, but the point is when these guys got these $300 plus million dollar contracts, they weren't expecting expected to be good players. They were expected to be great players, the kind of player that gets inducted into the Hall of Fame. Lindor hasn't been that as a Met, but neither was he as an Indian. Again, he's always been a good player, good hitter, great defender, reliable to play every single day, someone anybody would love to have on their team. That's not my argument. The argument is that most people if really anyone would not want to pay him $34 million a year to play for them. The argument is that when you add the context that he's getting paid $34 million a year over the span of 10 years, and you compare that to most of the other names making similar money, he hasn't been worth the contract. And I haven't even touched how abysmal the start to his 2024 season has gone. At the time of this video, he's barely hitting 200 and just all of his numbers are down. Things started off so bad initially that the fans decided to give him the Trey Turner treatment to support him, which is cool, but it hasn't done anything. And if you look at more specifics like his baseball savant page, which is a pretty cool site by the way, it just shows exactly how and why Lindor's bat has been so weak. He's not hitting the ball hard at all, he's not barreling balls up frequently at all, or hitting the ball hard, he's not striking out a crazy amount, which is of course a positive, but he's of course also, like I just went over, not making solid contact. Will this continue? I don't know. I would assume Lindor will get back to being the hitter he's been the last couple of years, but that seems like the absolute best you're gonna get out of him, and for a guy that's not only getting one of the richest contracts in baseball history, but also a guy who's on a team that hasn't gone anywhere since he signed it, if anything, only going backwards in growth, I do think it was a mistake of a contract to give out by Cohen, the money and the years. If he or whoever ended up signing Lindor gave him a lot less, again, we wouldn't be having this conversation, but we are because he got way more than he's valued as. Francisco Lindor doesn't suck overall. He's a good and fun player to watch when he's on, and that will forever be the case, but when you see the contract he's on, what his role is meant for the Mets, and how much he seems to be hyped up by a lot of people, he really is one of, if not the most overrated and overpaid player in baseball. Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.